What is photocombobulate? This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. Go to upstart.com slash macvoices and find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I love to welcome old friends onto the show. I love to welcome new friends onto the show, and I also love to highlight new things. And I get to do kind of all three of those today to talk about a new podcast, their new podcast. Um, first up, Thor, or excuse me, Jeff Carlson <laughs> uh, is here. Um, <laughs> Jeff, you, you, you look a little bit different than the last time you were here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I I had some 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 of my hair shorn. Uh, it was time. It it actually was way past time. But yeah, yeah. Well, this is Jeff Carl, the new Jeff Carlson, folks. To make sure that you know, in case you don't recognize him, without the uh, more than shoulder length hair. Uh-huh. Um, also, for his first time on Mac Voices, I'm happy to welcome Mason Marsh. Mason, welcome. It's great to have you. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. What a pleasure. Yeah, well, I'm, I, I questioned your association with Jeff a little bit earlier, but you're into it now, so here we go. <laughs> it's yeah, good. once you're in the hole, you just sort of stay there. It's, <laughs> it's okay. It's good to know that any association with me is immediately questionable. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, see how I've this is going to go. Emails, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got an email. Well, I said I'm welcoming old friends and new friends, and so we've done that. Now we're going to talk about something new, and that's their new po- podcast called Photocombobulate. Yes. Yes. Um, so, you know, I'm just kind of going to leave it there. It's obviously a, a photography-oriented podcast. But beyond that, Jeff, I'll let you start. What is Photocombobulate? So – <clears throat> Photocombobulate, first of all, it's a very cool word, and we went through a lot of iterations. Uh, but basically, Mason and I have known each other for 30 years. We worked together on our college newspaper, and you know, in, in various ways, uh, you know, have stayed in touch and drifted apart, and um, you know how things go over 30 years. And in recent years, we've done um several photo workshops together uh we we co-lead these these workshops um and it has i think we've been like good sounding boards for each other and we've always wanted to do some sort of project together and finally we we hit on the idea of doing a podcast and it would be a podcast that was more than just sort of talking about the the fairly small box that most photography fits in. So you've got, you know, cameras and hardware and some of the the basics like composition and and lighting. But in in talking like we really well both in talking and with through our experiences photography is really much broader than that. And it, it seems to us anyway, I mean, you know, obviously we haven't listened to every podcast out there, but we've listened to plenty. We've, you know, read articles and books, written articles and books about these things. And it doesn't always encapsulate the bigger picture of photography. And so you know, part of the problem with photography is there's just so much to it. The, they're the things that I mentioned, but there's also uh, the weather. If you're a landscape shooter how do you know when the weather's going to be good? How do you read the clouds? Uh, what do you wear when you're out there? And like all this stuff is kind of swirling around. And that's where we, we, we got the notion of uh, photography being discombobulated. And from there, we were like, well, we want to combobulate this. Uh, turns out combobulate is not a real word, um, even though discombobulate is. And so that, of course, because we're both – word people that immediately attracted us. And we just want to want to have this podcast be something that, that brings all this stuff together and not just talk about, well, how do you get a good picture, but how do you have a good experience? Because that makes such a big difference. That's first of all, the, the and I have to believe photocombobulate.com was not hard to get. <laughs> it was not. So, <laughs> 
that was the other thing. That was also one of the <laughs> one of the things. Like, like, can we get the domain? In fact, um, I, I'm sure. I think most of our suggestions that we were coming up with, it was, well, what about this? Nope, domain's mm-hmm. taken. All right, what about this? The domain's available, but it's not a very good term. Mm-hmm. You know, on and on and on. Yeah. So Mason, you're you're new to to the Mac Voices audience. So if you don't mind, talk a little bit about your background beyond what Jeff just said, and how you view what the photo combobulate will be. Yeah, it's uh, my story is kind of a twisted one. I um, started out as a photojournalist out of college and worked in newspapers for several years, mostly small market newspapers, um, doing daily just out there grinding out photos every day and and over the course of several years made almost a million images um, and got really tired of that life and got really burnt out. And so I went sailing. I joined the crew of a traditional kind of historic tall ship. And uh, one of the missions of the tall ship was to travel up and down the West Coast teaching school kids about uh, history and nautical traditions and things like that, navigation. And I really fell in love with teaching. Um, we taught about 26,000 school kids a year. I did that for a couple of years. And so I really got a lot of practice teaching and it really, uh, sort of set well with me. I felt like as a journalist, one of my roles was, uh, sort of ex- experiencing things and then sharing that experience with people who couldn't be there. And, uh, I see teaching as being the same thing. And so from the tall ship, I went on into education in lots of different forms. I worked in museums, uh, worked in classrooms, developed curriculum, uh, ended up doing all kinds of experiential education before eventually circling back around to photography and leading photography workshops. I uh, led photography workshops for a few different places for a while and then started doing them on my own. And Jeff actually came on uh, my very first independent workshop. And that's where we reconnected. And um, from there... Our paths have really been parallel and, but, but on different tracks. I'm, I'm a person who likes to teach classes. I like to do a lot of uh, one-on-one teaching and, and guiding. Jeff, of course, has a great career as an author and writing amazing books. Um, but both of us have been explaining complicated things to people for a long time. And when we talk and we get together and we talk, we, we oftentimes find the most common ground we have between us is this joy of seeing people sort of light up when they finally get something that was really difficult to, to, to understand. And guiding people from confusion to that joy is really, really satisfying. And as photographers, um, I'm, I'm often as a photographer, pretty, pretty, uh, unsatisfied with the information I get from other photographers. It, it seems competitive. It seems there's a lot of ego involved. And the truth is we're, we're not competing with each other. We're out making photographs for the fun of it and for the betterment of the world. And I think having a podcast that celebrates the process of making photographs and all of the adventure and the fun and, and yes, sometimes even the struggle involved in that, um, it's, it's just, it's bringing something good to the world instead of just having a bunch of photographers talk about how they're better than everybody else, which gets really tiring. (laughs) I I love the idea of, of the transition from confusion to joy, I think is what you said. And, and I, that's, that could be applied to pretty much anything. And you two are deciding to apply it to photography, which up until up until the iPhone got really really good, mm-hmm. I think true f- photography, at least for me, because I I was not a photographer, and Jeff and I've argued about this plenty of times. You know, am I a photographer now? I don't know, but you know, it's it, it. I definitely have learned more about photography and about taking better pictures, and it sounds like that's what you're going to try to do with with this. So my I guess my question is, you know, do you see this as for the, the rank amateur or the person like me who's somewhere in the middle, or is this going to be more for someone who has the experience of DSLRs and SLRs and, and knows something about the topic? Well, yeah, I would say, oh, go ahead. Jeff. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> for for <laughs> me, it's anybody who is willing to listen and learn. I, I, you know, I don't think any photographer, if they're really being honest with themselves, has it all figured out. And if they think they have it all figured out, they probably just stopped asking questions. And so I think that, um, 
for me, I, I would say somebody who's brand new, just, just got a phone that has a camera in it and they want to take some photos. Obviously they're going to get something from our podcast and hopefully find, um, you know, big wide open door to lots of new ideas. But somebody who's been doing this forever, um, like me, I've been taking photographs for most of my life. I still learn stuff all the time. And that's what keeps photography very exciting for me is the continual process of learning. And so anybody who's interested in that is going to find something in our podcast. Well, and I think, so part of this, and I don't want to sort of put us into a smaller box, but um, a, a lot of this really comes out of the experiences that we've had uh, leading workshops and, you know, having discussions back and forth. And, you know, on a recent workshop, there were uh, a couple of people who I don't, well, they didn't own DSLRs. I don't think they had even really done any photography. They, they borrowed mm -hmm. some cameras or they um, rented some cameras because their good friends were people who had come on, on multiple workshops with us. And so, you know, their friends talked them in, into coming on. And I don't think they had any expectation that they were going to make these amazing images and they were definitely learning as they went, but they were going because their friends were going and they knew they'd see some beautiful things, even if they had to get up at four 30 in the morning to do it. Um, and, you know, the, this was uh, in the, the San Juan Islands area here uh, near Seattle. And and we did. We saw beautiful things. Uh, we had this, like, great camaraderie. Um, I actually – I don't think I ever saw any of their photos. I don't know if they if they right. shared them or, or what. But, you know, that the, – the, the actual photos part of it was secondary to them because they wanted to have these experiences. And I think – you know, we, we, we forget about photography as an experience. And, you know, perhaps this is because we're a little bit more landscape centered. Um, because, you know, landscape photography gives you the opportunity to go out somewhere. But, you know, that also applies if you are walking around your neighborhood. Um, if you are, you know, doing like, portrait shoots. Maybe you're doing um, senior portraits or just pictures of friends. Um, I have a friend, she is in college and she just takes pictures of her friends and, you know, loves doing it. And that's also an experience. You have this experience of not just trying to figure out, you know, what lens and background and composition, but you're, you're interacting with a person and trying to get something out of them that maybe they don't even know is there or a look or a mood. And so, you know, again, the, there's like so much wrapped into this that um, I think, you know, anybody who picks up an iPhone um, and takes pictures, um, yes, mm -hmm. that makes you a photographer. You You may not be like on the scale of, boy, I need to know different lenses and all that, but you're still – thinking like a photographer you're still looking at the world with with that that mental lens of oh you know what this this composition appeals to me i don't know why but it compelled me to take this picture and even if that was just hey look there's the space needle uh you know that's that's one thing and we can you know bring all of that experience to what we can teach uh, through our podcast. You, Jeff, you and Kirk McElhern and Derek Story and several others, you know, have taught me a lot about a phrase that you just said there, learning to think like a photographer. I, I don't pretend to say that I can mm -hmm. think like a photographer, but I think, I believe that I think more like a photographer now because I'm seeing, yes. I, I start to see things and think that would be a great <laughs> picture. And so, you know, you pull out the iPhone and you take it. And sometimes it is, sometimes mm -hmm. it isn't. But I feel like I learned from each each one of those processes. And so this sounds like just this is one more time, one more place. I'm going to learn how you, both of your heads work so that maybe I can take better pictures and then maybe even aspire to be a photographer, whatever that means. Sounds to me like you already are a photographer, Jack. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to tell you. you are. <laughs> I'd love to tell you I am, but you know, I, I I've, mm-hmm. I've printed some things and I have a couple of things hanging on my walls, usually out of sight from anybody yeah. else. But I'm happy with them. Um, so you know, well, I mean, that right there is a huge part of it because um, you know you, you're not competing with anybody, you're not trying to win awards, but like what you just said. But I'm happy with them, and I I think I mean. <laughs> Maybe this is an assumption that's off the mark, but like my gut feeling is so many people don't focus on that aspect. You know, they'll, they'll go out and they'll take some pictures and they'll be like, oh, like, I don't like any of my pictures. I'm a bad photographer. These are junk, you know, but there are also, you know, times when you're like, this picture is not a good picture, Right. Like it's out of focus, um, the composition is all out of whack, whatever. But this is a memory of one of the best days that I had on this vacation, or, or you know, what, like one of my favorite days ever. Right? Um, I I have an image um, that uh, my wife took of my daughter and I when we were in New York, and it, it's it's one of those like like it's completely askew, it's really blurry, but. We are both laughing, and I remember that moment as clear as as when I was there. And it's one of my favorite pictures. You know, it it is not a quote unquote good photo, but it is one of my favorite photos. And there's that that satisfaction of of being able to do that, of of being able to see the well, the, like you said earlier, the the joy of the moment. I mean, I, this, this is obviously, this interview is not about me, but something you said there struck me. I mean, what, one of the, it is, yeah, thanks, Jeff. It's your show. But, but, but one of the things that, that I have done <laughs> is I started taking pictures of if, I, if I've enjoyed a really great meal on vacation or somewhere, you know, not local necessary, necessarily, I, you know, I will take a picture of that. And then I have a, a collage on my kitchen wall of you know things and to your point jeff each one of those i might not be able to tell you when it was taken but i I can tell you where it was taken and it brings back a very positive memory and it makes me happy it also makes me hungry but that's another another problem (laughs) um and so mason i'm curious you know in your teaching i I think the, the tall ship thing is fascinating i had a friend who did some of that um what did you i guess what did you learn from the kids you were teaching them, but you had to learn some lessons from them about how they looked at things, and and maybe that has applied to some of your instruction in photography. Yeah, education is always a two way uh, exchange. It's always a relationship that involves give and take. And you know, from the kids on the coast of California and Oregon and Washington, the thing that I got from them over and over again was that children have this sense of you know, just wonder with new things. They're not cynical. Um, you know, I, I feel like my 10 year old son is getting cynical, but <laughs> the kids that I taught were mostly fourth and fifth graders and they still were really, really open to hearing <laughs> things that were new and exciting and being on this kind of a magical, you know, they always called it a pirate ship, even though it wasn't, um, you know, being on this ship, it really was a transformative experience for them. It was very stimulating and, I just love seeing them light up with this sort of wonder, like they're in a movie. And I think as adults, when we learn, a lot of times we're thinking about a product. And this goes back, I think, directly to photography. Oftentimes we're like, well, what kind of photo am I going to get out of this at the end? And what we forget is the process of learning something is a a peak human condition. It really is as good as it gets for us to improve our knowledge, improve our skills, become good at something. Um, Even if the product is not appealing to anyone else, that process is immense value and can make you a happy, more rounded, well-rounded person and make you a more satisfied person. I think a, a word that we use a lot, Jeff, in our podcast is satisfied. And I think that that's what we're going for is not that we show our photos to people and have them just go, oh, wow, which is harder and harder to do because we see thousands of images a day, some of us. And 
it takes, it takes a lot to stop us in our tracks and go, Oh, wow. But the process of making a photograph for an individual, um, can be incredibly satisfying and life affirming. And that's what we're really focused on. Not so much the, the product. And so going back to those kids, man, just the love of the love of learning something new and exciting to them, uh, kept me going because I said the same thing over and over and over again to them. They didn't know that I taught that same lesson to thousands of other kids. To them, it was brand new and fresh and exciting. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Upstart, fair and fast personal loans. Go to upstart.com slash Mac Voices and find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments. What are you doing to improve your financial situation? Or have you just thrown up your hands in frustration? If it's the latter, you should take a look at Upstart. Upstart is fair and fast personal loans when you need them for personal expenses, credit card debt consolidation, and more. And Upstart is different. They look beyond your credit score to your current employment and income to provide you with a smarter rate. And they do it in five minutes, all online, all on their website. Loans from $1,000 to $50,000 can be received in as little as one day after you accept your loan and your smart rate. So what exactly are you waiting for? Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash macvoices. That's upstart.com slash macvoices. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Upstart for their support of Mac Voices. I want to jump to one thing that, that you had mentioned um, about you know being able to, to see as a photographer. And I think part of what we're also going for here is how do you get back to that? Because a lot of photographers, I, I think they reach a point where you just see everything photographically. And it, <laughs> it, it frankly becomes a problem sometimes when you're, you're driving, you're like, oh my God, the sun is perfect. If I could just get out of the car and catch this golden hour and, you know, um, all, all apologies to the wonderful people that we live with who have to put up with this sometimes. Um, but there's also that sense of, okay, I'm going to turn on my, my, my photographic brain, right? I'm going to go out and, and shoot some photos and I'm going to look at the world like a photographer does. And if you've done sort of anything that requires getting into a certain mode, you know that sometimes it takes a while to get into that mode, um, whether you're exercising or even, I mean, I know uh, people who they go on vacation and it takes them two or three days to actually really settle into the vacation. Well, it's kind of like that with photography too. And it's, it's great to, you know, take the initiative, get yourself out there, go to a, a great location, but you can still feel rusty or, or, you know, your, your, your brain isn't thinking like a photographer because maybe you're thinking about, uh, you know, the traffic it took to get there or whatever. And so I think part of what, what I want to do with this podcast is, you know, help people sort of push themselves along so that you're, you're, you're seen as a photographer more and more so that when you do reach that, that photo shoot that you're, that you've been, you know, waiting for all week, that you're not just starting cold, that you're already thinking about, okay, where is the light going to be? What sort of images do I want? And how open am I to shooting something that is, you know, not something that I've pre-visualized? And, you know, it's it's a muscle, like it takes training, it takes practice. And it's it's easy to think, okay, I'm going to go take some pictures this weekend. And then on Sunday night, I'm going to put my cameras over on the shelf and then I'm going to be Mr. Working Guy during the week. And then next weekend, I'm going to go take some more pictures. But it's sort of choppy in that way. And if you can get yourself to think photographically, see the world in different colors, you go get the mail and you think, wow, you know, the, the bees on this sunflower are just amazing. Maybe I'll take a picture with my with my phone. Maybe I don't have anything. But you're you're starting to think that way, 
and it just gets you more into a receptive state of being able to take photos when you need to. And quite honestly, seeing the world like a photographer is just a great way to see the world. It's, it's more colorful. It's more um, saturated. It's, it's got more variety and interest. So much of what you just said, Jeff, goes to something that Mason said a, a minute ago for me. He, and it's a phrase I didn't understand for a long time. He said about making a, a, a photograph, making a picture. And, you know, I, mm-hmm. I've, for me, it's like, well, you know, I pick up the phone, I snap the picture, and, you know, that's it. And, again, the thought processes that, you go, that, that photographers go through is, is, in my mind, at least mm-hmm. partially what making a photo means. I've come to learn that also means a lot of the post-production stuff, um, you know, for tweaking that. But, you know, there is, there is oh, yeah. a baseline that you, you, when you create it, when you compose it from the ground up, you know, and then go and play with it after the fact, that changed my whole perspective on things. And I love what you, I love what you said, Jeff, about, you know, the weekend thing. I mean, it's sort of like being a good golfer, a good tennis player, a good whatever, you know, you, it's it's really difficult to just do that on Saturday or Sunday, or Saturday and Sunday, and then work your week, then go back and try mm-hmm. to pick it up again. You have to do something in between, yeah. even if it's just thinking about it to improve yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and honestly, quite often thinking about golf. Well, is I think Chuck, I, I want to middle of the week. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was going to say so. you're a notable that's, golfer. That's a whole other yeah, podcast, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Chuck the. The iPhone has been a transformative piece of technology for a lot of reasons, right? It's a, one of the most amazing inventions in human history. But the fact that it put a camera in everybody's pocket and made everybody who has a phone with a camera in it a photographer, uh, you know, is to me a, a absolutely triumphant uh, piece of uh, um, just something I I can't. I can't get past how awesome it is. <laughs> you know, I oftentimes sit back and go, I have something in my pocket that I can take amazing photographs with. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear in my closet that I don't want to carry with me every day. And there are times on the weekends where I put the bag on and I go out and I, and I make photographs. But more often than not, if I'm going to make a photograph, it's going to be with that camera that's in my pocket. And I pull out that iPhone and Apple has done such a masterful job of removing the obstacles between uh, the vision that I have in my head and the photo that I end up with on the camera or on the phone. And a lot of people kind of bemoan that, you know, they're like, Oh, it's too automated. It's too, (laughs) it it just does all these things and I can't control that. It's like, well, what you've got at Apple is a lot of really smart people who are saying, we want people to have satisfying experiences with taking photographs and we're going to remove the hurdles so that they don't have to know the jargon and they don't have to know what an F stop is. And they can just pick up that camera, pick the right mode, aim it, compose a good shot, grab the subject matter that compels them and, and get the photo. I think it's amazing. And it's definitely photography to go to your point about um, seeing like a photographer, the, the phone does that so well. Because even without thinking about it now, we know how to compose our shots with the iPhone. We know that if it's a person, we can put it into portrait mode and it's going to blur that background. It's going to create a more pleasing experience. You're thinking about it as a photographer would, but it's sneaky that way. You know, it's, it's, you don't know that you're thinking like a photographer. You're just gra- trying to grab a cool shot that's going to look good on wherever you put it. So I, I love the fact that people, don't have to own cameras to be photographers. Um, and I embrace this technology. I love it. I think it's, you know, I get a new one every year because the cameras get better every year. The phone hasn't gotten better. It's that camera that is what I'm buying every year. Well, and I mean, I, I hesitate to say this because I, I, I feel like I'm going to sound like I'm too highfalutin, but I also feel like Part of what we're doing is pushing pushing back against this idea that if it's if you don't suffer in some way, that's not worth it, right? So if you haven't, you know, um, fought with a tripod or um, tried to to use the manual settings on your camera and figured out <laughs> aperture and shutter speed and all the relationships between those, like. 
if if you haven't suffered in that way, then you're not a real photographer, right? And I think there's there's a little bit of this that's out there that's like, oh yeah, well, sure, the iPhone can give me this amazing high definition, uh, high color, automatically in focus. Um, make sure the sky's not blown out. It can use artificial intelligence to do all these things. And yeah, but you know, all you did was tap a button. So that doesn't make you a real photographer. And I mean, that kind of stuff just, just drives me crazy because I mean, yes, when I'm shooting with a regular camera, um, I'm sh often shooting in, in manual mode and things like that. But all that stuff is, is, is on top of and it, it accumulates. So it's not that, oh, you have to do the most difficult thing to be a photographer. It's that, oh, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to line up a shot in, in my phone. Uh, what else is there to learn? Oh, okay. Well, if I'm using a, a, a regular camera, uh, aperture lets me control the amount of focus in the background. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, and then shutter speed on top of that. And how do those things interrelate and how can I make sure that I freeze the action, but also have nice soft uh, background or sharp background. And like, like it, it becomes this, this positive uh, learning thing. So it's not that, Oh, you haven't put in the, the right amount of work to call yourself a photographer. It's the, okay, I know this much and I know there's a lot more for me to learn. And gosh, isn't this interesting? And wow, I didn't know how ISO works. And what is it with, um, you know, artificial intelligence when you're editing the photos later? And like, it's all this stuff that's like, to me, it's, it's, it's positive and it's learning. And yes, I can become a better photographer, but it doesn't mean I was a bad photographer. It just means that I didn't have as much experience or didn't have as much knowledge. And I mean, th this is something that I mean, we've we, we've posted two episodes so far, and uh, maybe we've mentioned this I don't know, two or three times in those episodes. You know, like Mason and I have been doing this for a long time, and we are always, always learning new stuff. There are things about my camera that I had no idea about, or there are things about, um, <laughs> you know, being able to go to a location and how can I find that? I mean. Quite honestly, if, if we can be totally honest here, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast with Mason is because he knows so much about how to read the weather and how to figure out whether, you know, the clouds are going to be, uh, you know, high and interesting or if they're going to be <laughs> low and, you know, obscuring everything or when do you get fog? Like, I don't know that stuff. And I'm eagerly looking forward to learning <laughs> and basically having an episode that talks about stuff like that because you know it's it's one thing to get yourself out there that's great but there's th there's just so much more to learn that can make the experience better mason is it fair to say that that weather knowledge comes from the the days of sailing the, sh the tall ship even before then, I've always been kind of a weather geek and a geology geek and, you know, an earth science kind of, kind of nerd. Um, if I hadn't become a, a journalist, I probably would be banging on rocks somewhere. <laughs> um, it really is, uh, I had somebody tell me once, um, that I really respected. They were teaching us about ge geography and geology. And they said, remember, uh, scenery is geology. And, uh, I think photography, especially outdoor nature photography, which is what Jeff and I tend to do on our workshops, but both of us dabble in all kinds of different other genres. Um, being outdoors connects you with the planet and does a lot of things that are really good for us as humans. Um, understanding it on a scientific level and spending the time to accumulate that knowledge really makes that connection stronger and makes the appreciation for when the clouds are just a certain way, um, makes that appreciation stronger. And to me, you know, and Jeff and I have talked about this on both episodes that we've recorded so far, this has come up about 
the process of making that photograph is so fun and so satisfying. All of the different things that you're juggling and uh, we've used the term spinning plates, right? All of these things um, all add up to an experience that in the end actually ends up having more value than the actual photograph. And if there is a philosophy behind the podcast, it's that. It's that the experience of making photographs, of being a photographer, is greater than the possession of the photographs that you've made. Um, I think that there's a lot of value in making great photographs that people can appreciate and learn from. But even if we didn't have those, it would still be worth going out <laughs> with those cameras and making those photos uh you know, we've joked about, you know, what if you took the card out when you're all done and threw it in the ocean, it'd still be worth the time going out and doing it. And so hopefully people get that from the podcast. So before we wrap up, I, I don't want to go too deep into the, into the podcasting thing, but I do think it's important to let folks know kind of how the show is going to be structured. Um, there's some shows that just have, you know, jump in and they have general discussions and they might start with a topic, but then they kind of drift away and <laughs> never to quite know what you're getting. Some shows pick a, pick a topic and say, this is what we're talking about today. Like Jeff was saying, you know, what do you wear if you're going to go out at 430 in the morning and, you know, pouring rain to take, take photography um, or do photography? Is, is this something that, I mean, how are you guys going to structure this? Um, and going forward, uh, topic by topic or general tips, are there going to be hardware shows, software shows? Do you have any idea at this point or are you just combobulating <laughs> it all together? Um, I think that we do have a great idea. We've talked about this a lot at, at length. We, um, we spent many hours, uh, on zoom. One of the nice things about being locked up in our houses for the last year and a half is that we've had lots of time to chat. I think that we are going to be doing each episode. will have a topic that will combobulate. And so it'll be a topic that's, that's been a source of confusion for folks, or maybe there's some, some, you know, discombobulation happening. And we're going to take that and break it down into pieces. And sometimes we'll do that with a guest and sometimes it'll just be the two of us. Um, and then our episodes will ultimately, if we do it right, uh, our episodes will leave everybody at the end, understanding that topic better uh, and having useful information, practical information that they can then take with them out into the field and um, make their photo photographic experience that much better and satisfying. Um, frequency. How often will this come out? Every two weeks. Okay, good. Um, and we we were joking, of course, but you do have the domain photocombobulate dot com. Yes. Um, social media presences, Facebook. Um, are you are you involved? Are you setting up ways for folks to interact with you, or how is that going to work for you? Yeah, yeah. The, we have an Instagram account, uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, all all the socials. That's that was actually one of the great things about <clears throat> excuse me. One of the great things about photocombobulate is. Yeah. Nobody else had Wide it. Open. <laughs> <laughs> and so like go to whatever whatever social uh that you prefer and do a search for photocombobulate and and that'll probably bring it up. Um you know, we we love getting feedback from people. So whether that's either you know at the the Facebook page or um, on the the website itself. Uh, in fact, as soon as we launched yesterday, I got a, a great note from um, actually uh, Kelly Gimont, who has has been a, a frequent person here. You know, and so you know, we 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 absolutely want to hear from people. Um, you know, get people's questions and also. Just, you know, hear feedback if, if somebody's like, look, I'm not nearly as positive as you guys. So <laughs> <laughs> stop being so cheerful. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, absolutely. Uh, we want to turn this into not just Jeff and Mason talk to you all the time, but, uh, you know, because photography, photography is a conversation. That sounds like a cliche, but. Um, you know, there's, there's just so much that goes into it. And if you are just on your own and, you know, not really being open to, you know, new ideas and all that, you're not going to be very satisfied as a photographer. So, you know, bring it all in. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to, to hearing just what you two put out and how you do it. And, 
uh, improving my thinking and and hopefully my technical skills as well. But uh, I, I find that it's a, at least as much about the thinking, and it has changed me. And I'm I'm looking forward to adding to that knowledge from someone who has written a lot of books and someone who has sailed a tall ship. That's <laughs> that's a pretty good combination. That's a pretty yeah, good unusual combination. combo. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, but it's good. It's I, you know, yeah, I like it. I like it because I, I think it, w- it would potentially be a lot less exciting if you did, two didn't have those those diverse backgrounds. You have a lot of common ground, but you have those diverse backgrounds. So you're going to bring different different perspectives to it. So absolutely, yeah, definitely. So photocombobulate dot com. Mm-hmm. Jeff Carlson, Mason Marsh. Thank you, gentlemen. Congratulations on the, on the new show. And uh, we'll be listening. Awesome. Thank you so much. Excellent. Yes. Thank you very much. Mason, Thanks you're welcome back anytime. Bring Jeff or don't bring Jeff. Whatever. I, I would love I mean, that. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I am a, an aspiring photographer. I think maybe you might be too, or whatever you call yourself. I don't care. Go and listen to Photo Combobulate. You are guaranteed to learn something from these gentlemen because they have way way more experience than most of us and that just means that they have to they have to share it it's in their dna they can't help it until the next time and as always thanks for watching visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with chuck on social media get involved in our facebook group or like our facebook page and get more out of your apple tech with mac voices magazine free on flipboard and on the web and if you find value in it all Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.